the business meeting at the World Science Fiction Society at the Education World Con will be in order. This is the site selection main meeting. So I'm going to dispense with the usual business meeting session preliminaries and go directly to that. This will be the agenda for the meeting, starting with the uh, announcement of the 2025 winner and that presentation, uh, then Glasgow uh, 26 bidders and a brief recess, and then we'll go to the various business which was not previously disposed of, and at that time we'll do the usual business meeting, uh, business preliminaries. So Ellen Montgomery, the site selection. Mm -hmm. my name is no, my microphone. Uh, microphone. No, no. It, that. How about now? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Good morning. My name is Helen Montgomery. I had the privilege of being the administrator for the site selection of the 2025 Worldcon. Um, we received 168 valid ballots uh, for the uh, for this year, and of these, we received one vote for Peggy Ray's house. We received two votes for Zerps in 2010. We received two no preference votes, and we received 163 votes for Seattle. So, congratulations. <laughs> Seattle will be hosting the 2025 Worldcon, and um, I think they now get to come up and tell you all about it, yes? Not quite. Not quite? <laughs> Honorable Chair, I ask unanimous consent that we thank the tellers for their hard work and instruct them to in uh, to destroy the voting portion of the ballots to make this election official. Without objection, it is so ordered. I'll go set some stuff on fire. My name is Alan Bond. And I'm Kevin Black. We are here on behalf of the co-chairs of the Seattle in 2025 uh, bid. Uh, they are uh, Kathy Bond and Sonny Jim Morgan. They are very sorry that they could not be here in Chengdu and uh, not be able to, not being able to come, they did the next best thing they could think of and sent their husbands to do their bidding on their behalf. <laughs> Um, hopefully, we have been bidding well on their behalf. Going forward, as the seated Worldcon for 2025, Kathy will chair the Worldcon, and Sunny Jim will be the pro program division head, and we will continue to do their bidding. Kevin as publications division head, and me as the chair's advisor, troubleshooter, and ottoman. Before we go on, we need to give our thanks to the Chengdu Worldcon for your uh, incredible hospitality this weekend, uh, and all your assistance bringing us here to China, administering the site selection uh, process despite grave difficulties in an excellent fashion across national barriers and across continents, and being good friends to us during the process. As we go forward as a seated Worldcon, we will draw inspiration from this amazing Worldcon in Chengdu, and we expect as well to be inspired by Glasgow in 2024. We have some announcements to make. Before we do, there's someone else we need to thank. 
which is the artist who created our fabulous bid logo, artwork and graphics, which had served us so well over the years of bidding, made us look so good that apparently we scared everyone else away from competing with us. Our logo was designed by Hugo Award-winning artist Lee Moyer, who lives in Portland, Oregon, and is well known for his many book covers, comic books, games, pinups, and works, work on the Small God series with Sean and McGuire. Uh, we are rebranding now as the Seated World Con, so all of your swag with this logo will be now extremely valuable collector's items. Um, we have a short presentation which will reveal our guests of honor and the hosts for Seattle Worldcon 2025 and also our new theme and brand. Have you heard? <laughs> ring, 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 ring. Seattle is hosting a Worldcon! <laughs> yes, Worldcon is coming to Seattle in 2025. We thank all of our supporters who have helped us along the way. The team is excited to announce, to introduce the Worldcon community to our local Pacific Northwest community of learners, doers, makers, and participators. We invite all of you to come to Seattle and build new bonds and an even brighter future for science fiction fandom. Without further ado, the Seattle Worldcon 2025 team would now like to introduce you to our amazing guests of honor and hosts. First, we have our author, Martha Wells. Uh, Martha Wells has been a science fiction and fantasy author since her first fantasy novel was published in 1993. Her best-selling series, The Murderbot Diaries, has won numerous awards, including the Hugo, Nebula, Locus, and American Library Association Alex Award. Her work also includes the books of the Raxura series, the Illyrian series, and several other fantasy novels, most recently Witch King, uh, which was published this year, as well as short fiction, nonfiction, and media tie-ins for Star Wars, Stargate Atlantis, and Magic the Gathering. She's a member of the Texas Literary Hall of Fame, and her work has been translated into 25 languages. Second, artist Donato Giancola. Donato Giancola's passion for narrative art has seen his work grace the covers of over 300 science fiction and fantasy novels, placed in hundreds of private and public collections, and landed numerous peer honors, including three Hugo Awards, two gold and six silver medals from Spectrum, the best in contemporary fantastic art, 23 Chesley Awards, and numerous other awards. Donato recognizes the significant cultural role played by art and makes personal efforts to contribute, contribute to the expansion and appreciation of genre works. To that end, he serves as an instructor at the SMART School, the Illustration Masterclass, and lectures extensively at conventions, events, and universities worldwide. His current projects include themed works for exhibition at fine art galleries, ongoing commercial assignments, book projects for J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, and explorations on his developing themes of empathetic robots and astronauts. We have JPL engineer and master costumer, Bridget Landry. Bridget Landry was educated as a chemist and planetary scientist and works as an engineer. She has worked in robotic spacecraft operations for 35 years, including the Hubble Space Telescope, Mars, Pathfind Mars Pathfinder, the Cassini mission to Saturn, and both the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers. Wearing her technical hat, Bridget has been on science panels at Worldcons as well as local and regional conventions. However, she has been attending and working cons for much longer since the age of 13. She's also a master level costumer and has won masquerade awards at both local, regional, and Worldcon level. Songwriter, musician, and performer, Alexander James Adams. In March 2007, unleashed from the land of Fae came a minstrel named Alexander James Adams. The gender opposite twin of Heather Alexander, he has inherited and continued her music and magic for all old friends of the Heatherlands, while earning new ones of his own. With fiery fiddle, compelling voice, and the same enchanting magic, Alexander inspires his audiences to make their dreams come true and look for the wonders within. From tender love songs to rowdy brawls, gentle Irish airs to rockin' reels, the fairy tale minstrel brings ancient legends and magical mythology to the mortal world in true bardic style, proving once and for all that magic never dies. 
Those are our four guests of honor, but we have two hosts to announce for our Worldcon, uh, Kay Tempest Bradford and Nisi Shaw. Kay Tempest Bradford is an award-winning teacher, media critic, and author of fantasy and science fiction steeped in black girl magic. Her debut middle grade novel, Ruby Finley vs. the In Interstellar Invasion, won the 2022 Andre Norton Nebula Award and is nominated for an Ignite Award. Tempest short fiction has appeared in multiple anthologies and magazines. Her media criticism and essays on diversity and representation have been published at NPR, io9, Ebony Magazine, and more. She teaches classes and gives talks on representation and creating diverse nat narratives and has been invited to teach at Clarion West, Lit Reactor, universities, and entertainment companies. She receives the 2023 Locust Special Award for developing diversity in genre communities, the 2020 Locust Special Award for inclusivity and representation education, and the 2022 Lemonade Award. Nisi Shaw is the multiple award-winning author, co-author, and editor of more than a dozen books of speculative fiction and related nonfiction including the standard text on diverse representation, Writing the Other, A Practical Approach. This text forms the basis for the class series of the same name, which they teach and administer with Kay Tempest Bradford. The Writing the Other workshops and webinar, webinars cover respectful representation of characters of differing demographics, culturally aware world, world building, and diverse narrative voices. Shaw's best known fiction is the Nebula Award uh, finalist novel, Everfair. The book, Kinning, to be published in January 2024, is an Everfair sequel. Recent books, including the 2022 story collection, Our Fruiting Bodies, and the 2023 middle grade historical fantasy novel, Speculation. Editing credits include the 2023 anthology, New Sun 2. They've spoken at Duke University, Spelman College, Sarah and Lawrence College, and many other institutions. For over two decades, they have served on the board of the Clarion West Writers Workshop and the Carl Brandon Society, a nonprofit supporting the presence of people of color in fantastic literature. So, Worldcon has not been in Seattle since 1961. A lot has changed since then. Seattle is a home base for a number of exciting industries like aerospace, biotech, software and gaming. While here, you can visit exciting attractions like the Museum of Popular Culture, Historic Pike Place Market, and the Fremont Troll. Explore the stunning outdoors right on our doorstep. We're nestled between the water and the mountains with easy access to day hikes, boat tours, and more. The Seattle Worldcon 2025 will be held in the brand new Seattle Convention Center Summit Building. It's great. Let's take a photo tour. So this is a photo of the center from across uh, at, at Expanse. It is gorgeous. You can see it's got glass throughout, so there is light everywhere. This is the uh, stair climb. Um, you can see those windows on all sides, and if you look in the distance there, you can see Pike Market down at the bottom of Pike Street and the Sound Beyond. Here is uh, the third floor. This is where a lot of our programming spaces will be. You can see the size of the hallways is quite large, so it sh shouldn't be hard to get, uh, it, it should be hard to have difficulty getting where you're going. Uh, this is, again, another hallway by the, the rooms. You can see that the rooms have their numbers on them that are quite easy to see, so you shouldn't be lost. And now, announcing our new theme. For this, we drew inspiration from the 21st, Century 21 Exposition. At our Worldcon, we don't want to recreate this. We want to recreate the spirit of wonder about the future with the benefit of experience and the, high, and the sense of humor, which leads us to building yesterday's future for everyone. Seattle is a forward-looking city. The last Worldcon held here in 1961 saw the future literally under construction. Across town, preparations were being made for the opening of the 1962 World's Fair called the Century 21 Exposition. Seven months later, visitors would ride the new monorail into fairgrounds filled with scientific displays looking forward to life in the space age. The public gawked at inventions like solar batteries, 
touch tone dialing and call waiting, all under the shadow of the iconic Space Needle, which was also a revolving restaurant. Innovation, it was promised, would lead us to a utopia where society's ills would be swept away by a tide of American-led innovation. How did it work out? Well, Seattle grew, but our utopia has yet to arrive. As we look back on a 64-year gap between world cons, we interrogate those dreams of tomorrow. What did they get wrong? Who did they leave out? A better future must include everyone. We don't miss everything about the 1960s, but we are nostalgic for their optimism. The sense of the future as a canvas. Our imaginations have the power to transform. We invite you to join us in two Seattles, the city it has become, and the multicultural and inclusive version of the city that was promised by Century 21. By sharing your stories, your costumes, your arguments, your accessories, and artistic creations, we will use our imaginations to build yesterday's tomorrow and explore the wonders of the 21st century. So let's ski to Seattle in 2025. We have the technology. Yes, our new logo. Thank you. The Seattle World Cup, August 15th to 17th, 2025. <clears throat> oh, yes, we're happy to take questions. Yes, we have a few minutes for questions. And also, while we do that, Joe is handing out our PR0 which is in both uh, English and Chinese, and it has uh, a summary of our theme and a list of our guests of honor and also our uh, first membership rates. Um, also, we expect that our uh, website will be launching, our new website, uh, our big website is there now, our new web website will be launching at the same uh, URL in about uh, an hour and 15 minutes. And you will be able to, uh, we hope, uh, purchase memberships at that time. Sure. Uh, uh, first question is, the Seattle is what is the name of Seattle? Okay. Then the second question is, for the Seattle members of the Seattle and the Seattle members of the Seattle, 谢谢。So we have chosen to go with the name Seattle WorldCon 2025 as our official name.、Um, and then the question about discounts is that we are going to be, as you can see on the sheet, we are going to have the same price for people who pre-supported. As everyone else, they will get one to one dollar credit for anything that they have、uh, done in support of the bid to、uh, go against the cost of their、uh, membership. Yes, and I think that shows if you are, at least until our first price rate, if you are, the, if you have a WizFizz membership because you voted in site selection, then I believe the upgrade fee is $125. American. So the translators asked me to repeat myself、uh, slower.、Uh, basically, if you pre-supported the bid or voted in site selection, you should be getting a dollar for dollar credit for that money that you've already given us uh, to uh, the cost of your membership.、Uh, any other questions? Uh, 
是以十九中外协会会员作为基准，也就是说，凡购买了世界科下图世界科外大会的会员，并且出席的人都会具有世界科外协会会员身份，啊，然后不会出现说这个只购买了线下参与的资格，但是不，也没有世界科外协会会员身份，也没有这个参与世界科外参与多奖投票、参与事务会议的权利的这样的人士。So, my understanding. So the question was whether um, the purchasing of a membership assumes that you have a WizFizz membership, or whether there were a way to get a membership without the WizFizz membership and not be able to attend the business meeting. And I believe that our structure is that you need to have a WizFizz membership to get an attending supplement. Um, and so you do. If you get a WISPIS membership and an attending supplement, you will have the right to attend the business meeting. Yes. Other questions? I don't. I don't see any. For, oh, okay. One more question here. We really don't have on time. Just one more question. How can people volunteer to help you, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> Um, this is the first uh, Worldcon, of course, in Seattle since 1961. We need a lot of help, a lot of hands to make it the most wonderful event that we possibly can. Um, the new website that launches, um, we, uh, you know, a lot of things are under development, but it does have a page for volunteering, and there is an email address for that. You can also talk to Alan and me in person. Um, and contact us through our website. We have plenty of positions that we need and we will be uh, posting those as we go along, both uh, grand positions like division head positions and uh, a lot of uh, smaller positions that we will need to fill. Okay, thank you very much. And we should all congratulate Seattle again. So uh, the next item of business would be a uh, presentation and questions for next year's 2024 Worldcon, which will be held in Glasgow, Scotland. Hello, can you uh, hear me okay? I didn't hear anything, can you hear me okay? Great. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I'm uh, Vincent Rockty, representing the uh, Glasgow uh, 2024 committee. Um, just a reminder, Glasgow 24, a Worldcon for our futures will be held Thursday the 8th till Monday the 12th of August 2024, so next year. Uh, it will be located in Scotland, Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland, and at the Scottish Exhibition Campus. Um, <coughs> third time we've been in uh, Glasgow. Um, just to say, the, the, the campus is flat, with a, just a couple of meeting rooms, one floor up. Very, very accessible. Um, it was a hospital during the pandemic, and therefore all of the air filtering has been upgraded to medical standard. It also hosted the Climate Conference 26, and therefore the Wi-Fi has also been upgraded to that standard. We now have eight on-site hotels, uh, and booking for those will open at the beginning of next year. Uh, our registration rates are on the website, uh, with strong incentives for younger people and various categories to encourage inclusivity. A reminder, our guests of honour are Chris Baker, also known as Fanghorn, Claire Briley and Mark Plummer, Ken McLeod, Nedia Korofor and Terry Windling, and we're delighted that both Ken and Nedia are here in Chengdu as well. We currently have 3,800 members, of which 3,400 are attending, and we're expecting 6,000 plus to be at the convention next year. We would love if you would volunteer. We have a committee and we have lots of volunteers. We always need more. Um, and if you're interested in being on program or have program ideas, the forms for those expressions of interest are already on our website. Um, so please go there. And just a reminder, the website is glasgow2024.org. That's all I really want to say. Very happy to take questions. Are there any questions for Glasgow? Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, wait for a microphone. Jane Stiles. Uh, just the, the quick question about the hotels. I haven't seen them yet. Are they, are they really, really close to the venue? Are they sort of scattered all over or just 
the, the eight on site hotels are one is physically attached and the others are all there. Um, the, the furthest is um, kind of like from here to the, the venue here. There is a river, there are two foot bridges across, a couple of hotels are on the other side, but again, it's literally the distance like across the lake here. And it's all flat and all accessible. Are there any further questions for Glasgow? It would appear not. Thank you very much. So, thank you and uh, look forward to seeing you next year. Next order of business would be uh, presentations for 2026. Is there a Los Angeles in 2026? Hello, I'm uh, still Helen Montgomery, um, but now I am here as a representative of the Los Angeles in 2026 bid. Um, I have a message here from Joyce Lloyd, who is the bid chair. Um, she regrets that she cannot be here in person. Um, Los Angeles is bidding for August 27th through 31st of 2026. They will, the facility will be the Anaheim Convention Center and the Hilton Anaheim. This is the same location if you went to Los Angeles in 2006. The convention center will be utilizing the north facility of the convention center, the arena, and then additional function space in the Hilton. The Hilton will be the primary hotel for sleeping rooms, and we are currently negotiating with a $179 rate for room nights, plus assorted taxes and fees, <laughs> uh, because it's, that's how we do things in the US. Um, we are also negotiating with the Anaheim Marriott for the remainder of our sleeping rooms, Currently, the Marriott has offered 199 plus taxes and fees per night, but of course, we are working on that. Um, the Hilton, we currently are estimating, will be using about 1,000 rooms at the Hilton and 500 at the Marriott, but there are additional rooms at both hotels, so we absolutely have the ability to expand to if we need to. Both hotels are a quick walk and easy access to the convention center and arena. It basically forms a U. Um, so there's a hotel here, and a hotel here, and then the convention center is here. So it's a very flat plaza, um, very easy to walk every place. Um, and for those who uh, were there in 2006, you already know this, but if you weren't, Disneyland is in fact close enough to walk to. Um, it is a 15 minute walk from the um, convention center campus over to Disneyland, and there's also a shuttle from the Hilton to Disneyland's entrance. So um, you can absolutely come early, stay late, or even take a day off from the convention and, and go over to the park. Uh, that's pretty much the main information we have right now. Obviously, we're a ways out. Uh, the vote, of course, would be next year in Glasgow, and some more information is going to be coming throughout this, this next year. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Where are I? Seeing none, do uh, you want to present Cairo 26? Or whatever? Or whatever. <laughs> Where? Where? <laughs> Hello, uh, I am Yasser Bajit. I am the chair of what was Jedi Khan, then turned into Peroni Khan, and now into who knows what Khan. Uh, I just want to inform everyone, I'm sorry for all of these changes that we're making, but we're facing a pretty hard time uh, getting approval from the local governments to host this event, uh, for various reasons that I don't need to get into here right now. Uh, just we're just like we're still trying to find the venue for uh, 2026 but if until the beginning of next year we don't have one uh, we will regrettably uh, either withdraw or move to some other year thank you very much yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any questions uh, thank you <laughs> so we're actually well ahead of schedule, so are there any bids for 27, 28, 29, any future year that would like to uh, 
have five minutes to uh, speak. Yeah. No. Um, I do I don't think they were aware that they should be here, but just so folks know, um, Uganda is bidding for 2028, and they do have a booth in the fan hall in the main expo. So I don't think they knew that they should be here to present today. Um, but I just want to make sure folks know that you can go and talk to Michael over at that table. Thank you. Um, so uh, it's just a little after 10.30. Uh, as per the agenda, unless there's some objection, we'll have a 15-minute uh, recess and then proceed with the regular business. So we'll reconvene at uh, 10.45, quarter of 11. We are in recess. Wait. Call the business meeting back to order. So I'd like to have the uh, head table staff uh, introduce themselves. Washington中央秘书黄义阳 委员会报告以及F5的文档修改说明。谢谢大家。I'm Anne Marie Rudolph. I'm the English Language Secretary for the meeting. I'm Donald E. Slate, the presiding officer. I'm Kevin Stanley. I am the Deputy Presiding Officer and the Videographer, and I will preside in such cases when the Presiding Officer is unable to for various reasons. Just a reminder that the meeting is being recorded, so uh, your image and your voice uh, may appear. These will be posted to the Worldcon Events channel on YouTube, uh, probably uh, shortly after the end of the Worldcon. A few other procedural notes. Hopefully people noted their attendance on the attendance sheets when they came in. Uh, you should turn off the sound on your cell phone or other devices like that. Uh, when you are called on to speak, you should either come up to the podium or have a speaker, a microphone may be delivered to you and speak into the microphone and uh, state your name before you speak. Uh, if there's some difficulty in your standing and getting there, we can get a microphone to you. And uh, just a reminder, what people say in debate doesn't necessarily have to be true or factual, and, but uh, people should remain polite regardless. Okay, so business not, we we're going to do a positive processing business that was not disposed of previously, including yesterday, and these are all constitutional amendments. Uh, the first one is the one we didn't get to at all, uh, which was F10. So this is in your agenda, and it's entitled uh, Best Game Category. Uh, debate time limit has been set to six minutes uh, for this amendment. The um, makers uh, 
anything they wish to say or their presence? If not, is there any uh, debate or discussion on this amendment to the Constitution? Dave McCarty. Yesterday, ye yesterday we ratified a best game Hugo. I believe that this proposal represents uh, a, a completely uh, uh, improper overlap, and uh, therefore we should not uh, put forward this category. Is there any further uh, debate on this? motion to amend the Constitution. Seeing none, we will proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. In favor, in favor, in favor of what? All those opposed? No. The Constitutional Amendment. Thank you. Uh, the nays have it. Uh, it's unanimously. A question of privilege, sir. I, be, I heard people calling from the audience. They were unaware of what motion was being placed ah. before. Before, I would suggest that we do. I would suggest that we do the vote again from the beginning. Make it a little more clear. I will be happy to do that. Uh, this is a vote on item F10 in the agenda, which is a motion to amend the Wisconsin Constitution. To take effect, this would have to be passed by this meeting and then ratified next year in Glasgow. Uh, the text of the uh, amendment is in the agenda. It's actually quite short. It's a new Hugo category. It says, awarded to science fiction or fantasy productions presented in game form for the first time in the previous year. Uh, if there was any lack of clarity, uh, we'll entertain any further debate if people want to at this point but I don't, there doesn't seem to be any such debate, so I will take the vote again, just in case there was some confusion. Those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. For those opposed, please raise your hand. Uh, the nays have it, and the amendment is defeated. So the next item is F10, which I came up before. No, but it's not. Uh, not F10. Oh, sorry, F5. I can't read the screen. Uh, the primary question before when this was brought up was that there appeared to be some inconsistency between the uh, exact meanings of the English and the Chinese versions. And as the motion was originally um, submitted in Chinese. Uh, the Chinese officers uh, went off and looked at this and we have made a suggested change in the uh, English version, I guess, uh, and which is the top of this uh, sheet of paper that says F5 on it. Particularly it changes paid its contributors or staff monetarily to uh, was a paid professional creation. And this is, uh, in our opinion, more parallel to the meaning and shades of meaning in the Chinese version. So uh, are the, um, and then the effect of this is to restrict the fan cast Hugo category uh, from its current state to uh, add to this restriction on uh, not being a paid professional creation. Is there any debate on this? Constitutional Amendment. I would like to make a motion to amend. I, I believe that, that I would like to amend to strike out the was a paid professional creation and change it back to paid its contributors or staff monetarily. And I will speak to that when there's debate on that. Is there a second? Uh, it moved and seconded to undo this change, and presumably you could therefore make this the equivalent change to the Chinese version. Uh, so we've been seconded to do that. Uh, I will speak here in favor of the amendment. The, uh, the first sentence of the category definition already specifies that it's a non-professional creation. 
So the second bullet point actually is meaningless. However, paid its contributors for staff, for contributors or staff monetarily is a proper uh, restriction that matches other Hugo categories for fan work. So I believe that that is the more appropriate thing to do what the makers of this motion intended. And you're Dave McCarty, right? Sorry, I am Dave McCarty still. Uh, is there a speech against the amendment? Seeing none, those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The amendment passes unanimously. We're now back on the main question as amended, which is basically the, so that's the wording crossed out on the slide, if you're looking at that. Uh, so it now says, paid its contributors or staff monetarily. Uh, is there any further debate on this constitutional amendment as we just amended it? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? It passes unanimously. So this will be, uh, this motion is adopted and this constitutional amendment will be passed on to Glasgow next year for possible ratification. Next item is uh, F7 and F8 in the agenda, which were referred to a committee. And the committee came back with a motion to replace uh, F7 and F8. So the handout shows uh, what is on this slide here. Um, as a replacement motion for F7 and F8. However, um, it was noted that, that actually countries don't administer the Hugo Awards. So that, that text said that. And the, uh, the committee actually modified its report uh, to do a replacement. So in, in all cases where it says uh, the administering country, uh, this has been changed. And I have a slide here which shows the changed uh, text for English. So basically, uh, all instances where it says uh, languages of the administering country uh, have been changed to say languages of the countries of the administering and prior year world cons, as uh, the intent had been to affect things related to the language of the country where the World Con was being held. So, I'll give people a moment to... Uh, Clarification. Uh, this is Anne Rudolph asking for clarification. Is this to replace both of these seven and eight? Yes, this is a single amendment which replaces both items F7 and item F8 in the agenda. So unless if there are any questions on this change in text, I'll be happy to try to clarify it further or the, the member of the can if necessary. But uh, I guess uh, uh, you want to give us a statement in favor or whatever. Uh, yes, the budget, uh, committee for F7 and F8. Uh, the spirit that we felt was uh, in the proposal of uh, F7 and F8 was inclusivity of other languages and other countries. Uh, so we reworded uh, rather than striking out uh, the original uh, text in the constitution we amended it so that it would be more inclusive uh, to other languages and other countries thank you uh that's effectively a speech in favor is there a speech against uh the report reported constitutional amendment replacing f7 and f8 Uh, point of information, uh, 
I assume that change carried the change about languages of the administrating and prior years Worldcon is both for 341 and 342? That is correct. All four instances uh, have been replaced. Thank you. Replacement. And I believe you're still pending all right? Right. Okay. Um, any further questions or uh, comments on this constitutional amendment? I remain Dave McCarty. Uh, I am speaking in favor of this amendment. Speaking as a Hugo administrator this year, it was unfortunate that some that works that were published for the first time in Chinese were not eligible. Uh, and I think that this is wholly appropriate and greatly needed by the society, so I encourage everybody to vote for it. Thank you. There have been two, two speeches in favor in a row. Are there any speeches against? Seeing none, I will proceed to a vote. Parliamentary inquiry. Yes. Kevin Stanley. Are we voting to substitute this for what was in the agenda, or are we voting, or are we assuming this is a substitute and voting directly on it? My, I believe we're assuming this is a substitute and we're voting on this as a constitutional amendment. Uh, microphone. Uh, I have just a question. Um, uh, I, I'm not I'm for this motion, but if there was a, a Volcom first in Finland and in China, should it be that the, 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 the language is Finnish and Chinese? Yes. 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 I'll make your motion. Yes. I'll, I'll just clarify this point. I mean, the original text of the Constitution does not ban any language at all. So. Uh, anyone can actually vote for anything published in any language on the planet, okay, uh, the year before. But here is the exception of republication. So if it was republished in a translated language of the host country, uh, then, or if it was republished for the first time in that country. So this is an exception for republication, not for original publication. Thanks. Sorry, again, I'm still the asset budget. Very good. Uh, any further comments or questions? Seeing none, so this is a amendment to the Constitution, and if passed, it will be here, then it will go on to Glasgow next year for ratification. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed? Uh, the Constitutional Amendment passes unanimously, and will be passed on to Glasgow next year for ratification. The next and last item is F9 from the agenda. Uh, this was referred to a committee, and uh, as I was a member of the committee, I was to ask the Deputy Presiding Officer to preside while this is considered. very much appreciate a volunteer to help operate the camera to do the panning of the room so that we have shots of people actually speaking rather than just of the head table looking at them. To make it easier for this on this particular motion, I would like to ask, that, or the chair would like to ask, if those people who possibly can do so come to the lectern and speak from there so they are in, in the wide shot. Uh, we have received the report of the F9 committee. You should have this handout. It is three pages long in the English version. It consists of the first two pages, which is the report of the committee itself, which is a replacement. It is a replacement for the uh, version that was in the original agenda. Sorry, Sorry, I don't think most people got those three pages. So. Uh, uh, let us pause then to get these documents out to everyone. So I mentioned there, there is no Chinese translation. Well, oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. Okay, that may oh. make it a little harder. I have it on my phone. 
，大家谁手上没有的话可以示意我。This is rather complicated. Ah, now this is a This is complicated even for ex,、uh, experienced business meeting people. 就等于我们现在手头有三个版本，我不知道大家有没有都拿到这个三页的这个呃修正的，就是委员会提出的这个版本，大家可以看一下。如果有没有的话，可以再跟我们这边现场监督姚姚老师再要一下。啊、呃，就是我们这边有三呃三不同的版本，第一个版本呢是在我们这个三页纸的前两页是第一个版本，然后在这个三页纸的这个补充版报告的第三页是第二个版本。那这两个的话呢，首先会有一些差异，我们会要在这两个之间做一个选择。然后的话呢，我们在原来的，大家可以看一下，就是这份原来的议程里面，还有一个之前的这个 F 九短标题，所以说我们最后要在这三个里面再做一个选择，所以说会有点复杂。I have been reminded by the secretary that I was not precise in my wording. The first two pages are the actual of this are the committee's report. In addition, the third page is a minority report. It is not the committee's report. It is an alternative proposal from a minority of the committee. 其实这个就是。这个三页的补充报告里面的话呢，还就是在刚才这个文字表示里面不是特别的准确啊。就是前两页的这个呢是委员会的一个报告，然后的话第三页就是呃最后这一页上是委员会当中的少部分人重新做的一个修正的版本。Does the chair of the F9 committee want to make a speech, to talk to this before we try to work through them? Yes. 
Mr. Eastlake. So I'd just like to sort of describe at a higher level what this material is. Uh, the committee report uh, describes uh, an amendment to the Constitution which would add a general facility for regional science fiction conventions. Uh, it generalizes the language in the Constitution and provides that new regional science fiction conventions could be created for a specified list of country by vote of the business meeting, and also the list of countries for a particular regional science fiction convention could be uh, rectified or adjusted by the business meeting. Um, and it, uh, in, it really reduces the references to NASFIC, there is still a definition of North America, but other than that, it isn't there. So after this was, if the committee report was adopted, it would then be possible to create an Asian science fiction convention by vote of the business meeting. I think that's a reasonable summary. Uh, there's also a minority report. Uh, to start yes. Okay. Uh, Donald Eastlake, this guy, is the known troublemaker. He submitted a minority report. And the uh, minority report is based uh, more closely on the text of F9 in the agenda. The minority report is uh, also a motion to amend the Constitution. And the, the, the motion actually sort of uh, presented in two parts on the third page here. Uh, the first part basically changes the Constitution to generalize it, typically by replacing Worldcon or NASFIC, uh, in, or the instances of Worldcon and NASFIC, replacing that sort of thing by selected convention. So after the first part, if the first part was adopted and ratified and became part of the Constitution, the Constitution would then accommodate uh, the removal of ASFIC or the addition of ASFIC or things like that without having to have those things changed because there would no longer be this uh, enumerated list in those instances. And the second part of this motion from the minority uh, basically adds material to what is in F9 in the agenda. It adds to what is in F9 in the agenda a change to the purposes of the society, section 1.2, so as to include uh, ASFIC. And it changes the ASFIC material in the agenda to define Asia. Uh, and it adds a sunset proviso to the material in the agenda. And I think that's a reasonable summary of the minority report. Yes, in addition, uh, uh, the, the chair uh, rules that should that end up being what goes forward, the provision would uh, apply not just to section 4X5, but also to the phrase being added to section 1.2, just for consistency's sake. Because if it sunsets, it takes, yes, it, it takes the references with it. Yes, uh, basically this, uh, this specifically incorporates the existing agenda text for F.9 by reference. So the, one, the change to 1.2, the existing F.9 text, the additional 4.x.5, all of that is subject to the same set. So the process we will follow is to first consider the report of the F.9 committee and if to, to see if the meeting has any changes they want to make to this. Once we have considered any changes, we will then look at the minority report and see if the meeting has any changes they wish to make to this, to that. We will then vote between those two to see which one will we accept as the committee's report. And once we have done that, we will take whichever comes out of this and decide whether we want to consider what's in the agenda originally or whatever came out of this. And then, and only then, will we vote on whether to adopt it as a constitutional amendment. The chair is aware this is really complicated. 
If, you if any of you become confused, please interrupt and ask about it. I want people to know what they are voting on before they vote on it. <laughs> yes. Okay. 得出的一个版本当中，去跟我们原有的议程上这个F九团标题去做一个决策。呃，那最后的话呢，如果说在这个过程当中，因为确实有点复杂，如果任何人有任何的疑问，请大家随时打断我们，然后问清楚我们现在
I call on Yasser, I want to ask you. Yes, yes, I want to ask a question. Are there other, I just as a show of hands, are there other people who are considering asking questions of the makers of this motion? Just raise your hand if you think you plan to ask. All right. The reason I asked that question is because if there are more, I was going to ask Yasser to come up and sit and, and talk from the from the lectern. Okay. Uh, uh, Yasser, if you would answer the uh, member's qu uh, question here. So technically, yes, but again, they have to have passed the business meeting first. So they have to propose a... Once. Once. Uh, uh, we, we could, it, it. We, we could uh, amend it to add a similar procedure to remove a region, but then uh, that would create a different set of issues. Or, or we could remove all the regionals from the Mark Protection uh, Committee altogether. All right, uh, now, now, now the members are reminded not to speak to each other directly. Are there any other questions or proposals to change this? Uh, 我们可以 propose, yeah, I think you're, I think you're going to have to stand up here on this. The proposal appears to be to uh, ask that this be, that regional be changed to continental, and uh, would you like to address that? I think if we get all the questions, I, maybe they overlap, so I can just answer them. Okay, let's try that. Let's take the next question, and we'll see if they can be answered all at once. Okay. 也是可以通过RSFSE这个机制来进行举办的 Oh, All right, we have now gotten to the point where we were debating a proposed change. Um, yeah, because he asked if it wasn't no, clear. The pro yeah, I understand some of that, but the problem is, is we got an original, effectively an amendment. Did the member wish to move to actually, that the earlier member uh, wish to amend, formally amend this proposal to strike out regional and insert continental. Did you want to move that as a motion to change it? Uh, the member has withdrawn the proposed amendment, so we were back to the question about regional. Uh, first, the, the chair in the chair's judgment, the wording of countries requires that any region defined by that is defined by a motion of the business meeting would have to consist of at least two countries. A single country could not be a region all by itself. So it would be two or more countries are a region defined by as the business meeting declares it. Now, if you'd like to address the underlying issue, okay. So. Uh, uh, the underlying issue of not being specific uh, at the points uh, 4.81, 4.82 uh, clearly defines the process of defining what the region is. So yes, if you just look at the first pages where uh, the first change where it says regions, it might be confusing. But then when you get to 4.81 and 4.82, it clearly shows the process of how we define each region. 
agree. Uh, it seems to be a, a reasonable interpretation as, as far as the chair is concerned. All right, are there any further questions about just the main committee report? Uh, you did one then, I'm gonna give it back to Carolina. Okay, she's, you, you couldn't see she stood up, okay. Carolina. Yes, Carolina. Uh, I, I wonder, is it possible to change the regions? You say, if you have, have established a region, is that permanently or then can it be changed to concern other countries? 4.82. Yes, 4.8.2 says that any Worcestus member can file motions at the business meeting to rectify, that would be to amend or change, the countries of a RISPIC, and such filing must have a clear list of the countries to be served by that specific RISPIC. So that if a region was defined and a, business, and a future business meeting wanted to, it could change that region by a new motion. It would not be a constitutional amendment to do so. It could be a one year, it would be done in one year at the business meeting. And now, uh, uh, was there anybody else who wanted to speak? Okay, Mr. Yellow. Am I correct that by uh, the presiding officer's interpretation, Australia, although a continent, would not qualify as a region. Yes, that is correct. It has to be one or it has to be two or more countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who wishes to ask questions or propose changes to the F9 committee report, the first two pages of this document? The chair hears none, and uh, therefore, this is, it's not adopted, but we have settled upon the wording of, the, of what this report is, and we will move on to the, looking at the alternative wording submitted as the minority report. Mr. Eastlake, I have a feeling I may need you to simply just answer questions and uh, would ask you to take the lectern. There you go. Is there anyone who wishes to suggest or to make changes or to ask questions about the minority report, the third and final page of the handout that we received? If not, then that is taken to be the wording that we will consider as the alternative. All right. Now we get to decide which of the two versions moves forward to the next round of voting. The question is whether we want to consider the F9, the first two pages, the original committee report, or the minority report. Who would like to speak in favor of using the F9's original report? Yasser, you may if you wish. Else you have the well. You have first chance as the leader of the. Yes, uh, 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 I think uh, that the original spirit of F9 was to be more inclusive of Asia, and therefore my proposed amendment was uh, to make it more inclusive for the world. Uh, I understand there are some concerns. I'll just address the concern you said about the uh, uh, Mark Committee. Is that even if two small countries in one year pass a new region? as per uh, the 4.8.2, uh, if you think that is unfair, you can always add more countries to that region and therefore give more countries that spot rather than just two small countries. But other than that, I think this is a very inclusive uh, format that does not deprive the fans of NASVIC from their NASVIC, but also allows the rest of the world to have a similar uh, connection to the world. Thank you. The next is someone speaking in favor of adopting the minority report overall? Mr. Eastlake. I guess I would just like to say that the minority report takes a more cautious approach to this issue. And uh, rather than just opening things very widely, it allows uh, one additional uh, regional convention for Asia 
and uh, it actually does not provide that that agent conference uh, by a simple convention would have a more protection committee representative on the idea that if it is successful, works well, uh, and if it, if it passes the sunset, uh, it gets re re ratified later, then that would be plenty of time to add it, uh, to add the capability for it to uh, appoint a more protection committee member. So I think that this is a more targeted and uh, cautious approach. Before I proceed, how much debate time remains? Minutes and 20 seconds. Okay. Thank you. We would like, is there someone who wishes to speak in favor of the original F9 committee report, the, I say, the two page portion? Hmm? I, I'd like to give people, this is debate between the two, I apologize. This, someone in favor of the first two pages of the F9 陈陈石啊,罗伊的主席 By the way, that was a neutral inquiry, so you can take it off of both sides. Yes, I think. The question was, um, when you come to vote, will I say, vote in favor of the first two pages or of the third page? That's probably as clear as I can make it. All right, we are at the point where we are looking for someone to speak in favor of the first two pages. Anyone? Carolina. Please stand up. I, well, in, well, I think that uh, the construction to have an aspect in the beginning was kind of strange. In this way, it is opening up to other countries. I don't know if this is going to be popular or not, but at least I think it makes it neutral, while it, so it's not only NASPIC. So I think it is a good. Uh, alternative. Next would be a speech in favor of adopting the third page in, as the minority report. Uh, Mr. McCarty. There is considerable sentiment and growing sentiment to unwind NASVIC from WISFIS. Uh, as such, I think tying a uh, thought of an Asian regional convention to NASVIC which, and making it a regional thing and opening up for other regions is a mistake. So I would prefer the second. Uh, I would prefer the second solution, as it makes things cleanly. There is a NASFIC, There is a NASFIC, and if other regions wish to do it, they make their proposal to do it. Next would be uh, a speech in favor of the first two pages. Seeing none, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of these? Oh, did you want to speak in favor of the first two pages? Yeah. I'm not. Well, 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 You're okay. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, of the, I'm going to call the person behind you. Okay, that's, you can't see behind you, of course. Uh, speech in favor of the third page. Yes. Uh, please stand up. And, and you, you. Is that Chen? Chen Liao Ye or the third Chen Liao Ye. Okay. First two pages, okay, oh, first two pages, yeah, okay, so there, he did have priority then. Okay, first two pages, This because no one spoke in favor of the first two pages when I asked initially. Okay. All right, yes, there. Yes, uh, Seth, uh, Thank you, Mr.主席,我尊敬的主席,我们需要注意到的是在目前,在亚太科幻大会,Asia-Pacific的Science-Fiction的完成,我一直说的是一个亚太科幻大会,现在已经为跨地域, uh, 亚太科幻大会现在已经为跨地域甚至跨洲级型的科幻大会开创了一个比较良好的先例 
应该尽早的让全世界的每一个地区都能够有科幻迷参与的这种科幻大会，或者说科幻聚会。所以呢，呃，我觉得我们应该大胆的向前迈进一步，啊、呃，朝着 S F S C 这个更好的目标去迈进。谢谢。All right. Next is a speech in favor of the third page, Mr. Yao. Still Ben Yao. I remember this time. Um, as we saw from the discussion earlier, um, the first two-page alternative allows people with a little bit of practice to game the system rather heavily. The second, the second alternative, i.e., the third page, is clean and doesn't let people gain the system. And while I enjoy the thought of being able to have a system in place that I can game, deep down in my heart, I think that having it is a bad idea, and we should have as ungameable a system as possible. All right. A speech in favor of the first two pages. A speech in favor of the third page. Yes. Rusty. Um. Because we believe that to make the world cinematic universe system integrate and expand is actually necessary. Um. For example, in Asia, we have already a number of countries. 超过四十个国家和地区，超过全球百分之六十的人口，亚洲有大量的一个幻迷群体，在中国、日本、韩国、印度等地都有大量的科幻社群，也在各地开展了各种规模、类型不一的科幻活动。我们也看到，就以本次中国的这次活动为例，和幻迷对参与世界科幻大会体系下面的各种展览、沙龙的活动，拥有非常大的激情。鉴于世界科幻大会过去八十一年来，只有两次来到亚洲，我们想我们不应该再等待这么长的时间，所以我们提议按照世界科幻的世界科幻大会的组织体系，借鉴北美科幻大会的组织模式，在世界科幻大会不在亚洲举办的时候，去举办亚洲科幻大会。然后鉴于刚才呃提到的一个中嗯在中国已经有一个亚太科幻大会的这么一个情况，呃我与亚太科幻大会的组织者就是金少廷。呃，也沟通过。首先，亚太科幻大会呢，它是仅在中国举办的，啊，这是第一个。然后第二个呢，它的官方名字也不能用亚太科幻大会。然后第三个，呃，就是嗯，它的组织模式，虽然它是一个很好的大会，但是它的组织模式和世界科幻大会的 r e c e p t i 体系有极大的不同。对，啊，这就是我想说的，谢谢。Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the first two pages? I can come back to you, sir, if I, unless there's, if, if nobody else wants to speak. Hearing nobody out, oh, uh, uh, no, you, told, you already spoke for it for once. Um, since nobody who hasn't spoken in favor of the first two pages has spoke, Yasser, you get one more chance. Uh, yes, I'm Yasser Bajit. I just want to address uh, uh, what my colleague just said. Uh, the proposal for the first two pages still allows for an ASVIC, which uh, I seem to, be, to feel that that is his main concern, uh, that the, uh, the wording does not allow it. The wording does not specify ASVIC, but it allows someone to propose in the business meeting, creating the ASVIC, and then getting approval for it then and there. Thank you. All right, a speech in favor of the third page, and I believe you, did you have a, did you wish to speak on this? I, somebody back there, yes. I knew there was somebody back there. If you could stand up on the table. Okay. Uh, Mayor西尼好。呃, 世界科幻大会举办持续上的一些困扰，那么，从而影响了本身世界科幻大会的举行，所以我不赞成第一条
，谢谢。报上名字。不好意思，我叫唐冰莹。Thank you. That was the date.、Uh, uh, In favor,、uh, in favor of that, that was a speech in favor of the minority report. Is there anyone else who still wishes to speak in favor of the first two pages? Is there anybody? I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the third page? Harry, none. We will. There is one. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Bacardi, you walked right in front of him when he was raising his hand. <laughs> I got skills. <laughs> Name, please. Name, please. Wait, it's okay. I'm fine. Uh, I'm called Liu Hongquan. Then, to express my point correctly, I just use Chinese to express my opinion. Then, I think this should be more careful. Because, uh, I'm using a speech in favor of the first time conference organized experience. Actually, it's 本次科幻大会就引起了一些呃争议，也对我的自己的参会体验来说没有那么的圆满，所以如果说把它弄成一个区域性的会议的话，我会很怀疑，就是在其他地区举办区域性科幻大会，它的承办能力、它的举办的情况，然后如果说举办的是一场灾难的话，那么会对呃那个区域的对应的一些科幻迷产生一些打击和影响，呃。如果说用呃前两页的表述的话，会呃导致一些区域性的科幻大会可能会办，但是会办的没有那么好，然后会对整个品牌的声誉造成一些影响。然后通过这种呃增加亚洲科幻大会的方式，我认为是一种更加谨慎的方式。然后认为一个区域有能力来承办这件事情，再去支持它，然后而不是就是呃每一个区域都可以自己去决定自己要不要办科幻大会。我觉得这是一种对品牌和科幻迷都是一种保护。好，谢谢。Before we continue, the chair wishes to make it more clear that any regional convention, ASFIC, NASFIC, or anything defined under the first two pages is not a world science fiction convention. It is categorically not a Worldcon. The NASFIC is not a Worldcon. The existing event. It is a. So it is a. If you like a smaller or lesser grade or a subordinate, if you like, event. Okay. It is called a regional convention, NASFIC, ASFIC, or whatever you want to call it. But it is not Worldcon, and it may not call itself a Worldcon. I believe we have exhausted the debate in this respect. I, I, we've covered all the grounds. It's merely a case of choosing between one or the other. Therefore, I am about to put a vote on whether to adopt the report, the first two pages, or the third page. That doesn't pass it finally. It just go, determines which one we will go forward with to the next stage. Which is to determine whether to substitute it into the original agenda item. Mr. Yellow, are you trying to get my attention?、Uh, If you are, stand up. Am I correct that what this is is a formal motion to take the majority report and amend by substituting the minority report? In which case, in a tie. It fails. Yes, in a technical sense, and this, for the benefit of those who know exactly what the rules say, this is a vote on. Eventually, it's a vote on whether to、uh, adopt the the minority's report as the report of the committee. However, the chair is going to put the motion in form of. Those in favor of the original report,、uh, and those who are in favor of the substitute, should it should the vote be a tie, the original report would stand. 
the, fir the first two pages would, would, uh, would stand if it's a tie. Is there anyone else wishing to ask procedural questions who do not understand what we are about to vote on? All right. Would all of those who favor the original report of the F9 committee, which is the first two pages of the report, raise your hands? Oh, actually, hang on, hands down, please. The, the chair has asked me to, add, to explain this because of its complexity. Thank you. Question. Procedural question. Microphone, please. Excuse me. Stand up, please. The chair has no problem with conducting a serpentine vote. The first question, the first thing we are voting on is do you prefer the original report of the F9 committee, which is Page F2. If you prefer this version, please stand for a serpentine vote. We will, as we've done before, we'll start on this side, go to the back of the room, and then start the other side. Count. We're starting with you. One. Now sit down. Two. Three, four, five. Is there anyone else wishing to vote? Five. All those in favor of the substitute, which is uh, the third page, please stand. And while the chair sees that this is clearly conclusive, I was asked formally to do this as a serpentine vote, and therefore I'm going to ask you to count off starting with you, as my talent. Yes? Two. Three. Four. Five. Eight. 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 Nine. I believe ten was what I, the last number I heard back there. Is that correct? No. Ten? No. There was an eleven in the back? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Eleven was the last count over here. Twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. Eleven. Sixteen. Nineteen. Seventeen. Wait, wait, wait. Seven, seventeen? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty-two. 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 Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. And twenty-seven. Anyone else? Twenty-seven. Okay.因为这是对于蛇形投票有一些这个我们部分的会员可能不是特别熟悉On this vote, there are 27 in favor of the substitute 
third page, and five in favor of the original report. The minority report is adopted as the report of the committee. It is not completely passed yet because we now have to work on the whether we adopt this or we move on to the move this one forward or do we stick with what was originally in the agenda. For this, I have to find the page of the original agenda, which is here somewhere. Uh, that's all your All right, we have completely run out of time, and the chair proposes without uh, another 10 minutes to consider this. Is there any objection to add to, uh, all time has de uh, expired on this. Um, is there any objection to adding 10 minutes of further debate time? Hearing none, we are, we set the clock back to 10 minutes total, thank you. Item F, item F9 in your original agenda, page 20 in most of the handouts, that is the original version presented to the meeting. The committee has proposed substituting the item marked minority report or page 3. Mr. Yellow. Procedural question. Since the original F9 was turned over to the committee, I believe that, in fact, the report that came out of the committee is automatically substituted because F9 in its original form doesn't exist on the agenda of the main business meeting <coughs> anymore, and therefore, what comes out is the committee report. The chair recognizes this to be an interesting parliamentary question. However, in a technical sense, the meeting can still control what it sent there. And this was in the form of, essentially, the committee was proposing as a substitute for what was sent to them, and therefore the meeting has to decide whether they wanted the original version or what they got out of the committee. I don't think this one is that hard. I hope it isn't. Therefore, we are choosing between the original version at, at, of F.9 or the thing labeled minority report that was page three. Is there anyone who wishes to debate between the two, or is there, actually, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the original version that was in the agenda as F9? Point of order. Uh, microphone and... Yes, uh, uh, I just want to ask now, since it passed the previous phase, uh, I think there are some minor changes that should happen on this to work as a substitute for F9, but I'm not sure if is procedurally possible or not? The, you can move amendments to the version that was in the original agenda. I mean to the one that came from the committee. 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 Yeah, the committee. Ordinarily, we would have done that at the, at the previous stage, but because I've basically made this yet another A or B decision, when we get to looking at it, yes, we could consider amendments to the alternative, the page three version. Because you want to make changes to the pay, the what we yeah. just have. Uh, my, my only concern is there's in the original con constitution, uh, NASVIC is mentioned a few times, uh, specifically on the uh, financial reporting and whatnot. So if this effectively creates an ASVIC, even if temporarily, uh, then it should, I presume, have similar uh, treatment in the clauses of financial reporting to the business meeting. Yes, uh, Mr. Eastlake, would, could you address this issue? That is intended to be taken care of by the first part of the minority uh, report motion. Uh, 
labeled convention generalization. It does include updates to the financial openness <laughs> clause and a general substitution for yeah. references to NASA. I missed that. Thank you. And even yes. though Mr. Eastlake, Eastlake told me that earlier, I missed it. So, uh, yes. Uh, well, the question was, do we need to go through and change all of the things that NASFIC has referred to? If, if, the, if the, 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 the so-called page three version is what we decide to proceed with, do we have to go change NASFIC everywhere it is and the portions of that are dealt with with the first of the two changes that are in that document? The question is, do we wish to consider any changes to what was any further changes, because there are none actually, on the original proposal as printed in the agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor of, of the original proposal that was in the printed agenda? All right. Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor of what we, the what is labeled minority report, the page three document that we discussed? Yes. Please. 也达到了相应的我们需要去调整的内容，所以我赞成呃第三页这个版本。谢谢。Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the original language? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the? Revised document labeled Minority Report, the page three document. Any other one wanting to speak at all on this? All right. In that case, the question before us is whether to keep the original version that was at F.9 or to replace it with the, pay, with the Minority Report after which we will then consider, finally, whether we should adopt it at all, overall. Any questions about what we are about to vote on? I would like to try a show of hands on this. All those in favor of keeping the original proposal, raise your hands. All those in All those in favor of accepting the substitute proposal as the business before the meeting, raise your hands. Hands down, the affirmative has it unanimously, and the document that is now finally before the meeting substantively to be discussed is the single page labeled Minority Report by Donald Eastlake, which is actually two uh, constitutional amendments. Um, Uh, do you want to divide it? Yeah. yeah. The chair, uh, the chair has heard a request to divide the question, which is to mean to consider the two separately. The chair rules this does not need a vote. It is the two items are actually sufficiently different from each other that it, a, a single person can request they be divided. They are completely separable and independent of each other. The first question, so therefore we'll take them one at a time. F9A is a proposal that would change all of the specific references to WorldCon or NASFIC in the financial openness clause to refer only to, or to, sorry, to re apply to any conventions selected by WSPIS. That currently includes WorldCon and NASFIC, but it could but refer to other conventions, should we create other conventions? Question? Yes? What, what's the, what, the question? Um, 
can we reverse the order of consideration for these two items since if we are not uh, adopting the actual change, this would be essentially a moot point? Um, one, we could, but two, the chair does not consider it a moot point. It would, I mean, it may not make any difference from what we currently have now, but it would leave the constitutional language general for the future. And it, that, that, do you understand? Yeah. All right. We, we will continue to consider these one at a time. Uh, I just want to address another question. Yeah. Then? Uh, no, I just want to point out it's not mute because if you go the other way around and you vote ASVIC first and then vote for whatever reason not to do the First Amendment, then ASVIC would not, not be required to financially report. The, the member has a good point. It is really quite important whether we decide the first one before we decide the second. It's better, more important than I realized, so the chair, the chair stands corrected on this. Is there any debate of any sort? Is there anyone in favor, or who wishes, is, there any, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor? Anyone who wishes to speak against? I would like to speak in favor. In favor, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah so, so, okay. We're speaking in favor of just F.9.8. Uh, again, uh, I, as per all my speeches before, this opens up uh, the possibility and inclusivity for future world cons to uh, for, uh, cons, sorry for future cons across the globe uh, from fandom all over the world to be part of RISPIS rather than right now as it's only allowing a North American. So uh, having the wording uh, that is inclusive and allows uh, and is generalistic uh, gives opportunity for future uh, business meetings to start adding world uh, events as uh, we're discussing here. Uh, Point B. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against adopting F9A only? Is there any objection to proceeding to a vote now? Very well. This is a vote to adopt F.9.A and only that section, the top, the top half of this page, to adopt that as a constitutional amendment and send it on to next year's World Cup.这里我需要再解释一下啊因为现在还是会稍微有一点复杂就是现在我们已经回到了我们这次补充报告小时报告的这个第三页上但是大家可以看一下第三页上有上下A和B两个不同的条款所以我们现在讨论的我们现在表决
over half inch. It's, it's the min this is the minority report. F9A, establishment of ASTIC, and, and it would create an ASTIC, an Asian Science Fiction Convention. I, what I first would like to, are there questions technical about it as opposed to debate? All right, very well. Hello, everyone. 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 Hello, 我想请问的是，是不是这意味着原 f 点九新增加的各万大会的四点 x 点一到四点 x 点四的内容也会被一并通过吗？如果您回答也会被一并通过，那么我提议将原四点 x 减亚洲通万大会的从四点 x 点一到四点 x 点五的五条条款全部进行分别表决，因为这五条条款各自有各自的问题需要解答。也无可能会对整个亚洲科幻大会的选举程序产生不平的重大重大影响。谢谢。The original proposal, F.9, on page 20 of your agendas, was replaced with this proposal. That version with the clauses 4.x. One, two, three, and four is not before the meeting. It was re it was replaced with this as the proposal. Therefore, there is no reason to go through those points one at a time. They are not before the meeting. Yeah. Well, no. It just is to add the following material. It, it uh, the numbering. Oh, okay. This is the confusing part. Yes. The numbers, the section numbers and, and, and article numbers in the Constitution are not substantive. They, they, the secretary of the meeting will clean up the numbering if it passes, it, and also renumber and change all the references. The fact that this says 4.x.5 just really says add a new section at around 4.x whatever. Does, do you, so it doesn't really matter that it says 4.x.5, it would be to add a new section, uh, an in, a new subsection in Article 4 of, uh, um, of the Constitution. Does, is, is that, do you understand? Uh, are we okay? The chair has no intention of running over roughshod on people. I want everyone to understand what we are voting on and discussing. That is going to mean we go slow sometimes. And I thank the meeting's <coughs> indulgence on this. All right, where were we? We've had a speech in favor. Ah, yes, do we have a, do we have a, that wasn't a speech, uh, we don't even have a speech in favor. A speech in favor of F9B, and uh, Mr. Eastlake, I believe, would be there. Sure. Uh, F9B would uh, establish the aspect, and uh, I actually also wanted to speak to point out that uh, if you look at the, at, F9B, it says, also includes making the changes in item F9 from the agenda. So actually all the 4.x.1234 in the agenda are logically part of this. I hadn't thought about it. having to be printed and uh, you have to all fit on one page. So I believe that in some sense those uh, paragraphs are before the body, uh, but uh, I don't think it's necessary to consider them separately. And uh, I think this does what was intended uh, by the step for the establishment of the aspect with the improvements of the sunset clause and uh, so forth. The chair sits corrected. 
I apologize. The member's original question over here was correct. What we are now voting on, basically, is all of the things at 4X through 4X3, and what's is there a forum there? 4X4. 4X4, and then also 4X5. You are, you are all correct, and the chair got lost. We've got it, uh, yeah, we have at all these. Now, on the other hand, I agree. I do not believe that it is necessary to vote on each one of these items individually. I believe it is a single proposal organically, especially because we've adopted the, the minority report there. However, here we still to change All right. Did you wish to make a, a request to change the wording of one of the sections in the original 4X through 4X4? You wanted to change some of the wording. Is that correct? Only members of the administration administering convention. Administering members of the administering. 也就是管理会员这个表述呢It is important because what it means is to give a specific example that, a, that happened this year with NASPIC, because I had to work with it, this would work also with NASPIC, so it doesn't matter in this way. This year, there was the need to choose a NASPIC for next year because there is no net there is no Worldcon in North America next year and we choose NASPIC one year in advance there was a NASPIC this year and therefore this year's NASPICs members voted on where to hold next year's NASPIC had there not been a NASPIC because in that case that would have meant there was a Worldcon somewhere in North America, then the members of the Worldcon this year would have chosen the site of the NASPIC next year. This means, this wording means that in a year when the election to hold an aspect should it be, an aspect should it be needed, if there is no aspic in the year in which the election is held, then the Worldcon holds that election. But if there is an aspic happening in the year in which you have to hold an election to select an aspic, then that aspic would choose the aspic and not the members of the Worldcon. Can I, can I explain it in a simpler term? The member can attempt to. I mean, so, people get confused by NASTIC as it is. Well, yeah. Sorry. So, mm -hmm. the Worldcon uh, is a replacement for any other uh, that, uh, that it holds under. So, if the Worldcon is in uh, America, then it is effectively the, uh, a NASDAQ. More or less. Yes, from a even, voting even though it, yeah, from voting, even yeah, though from it's a voting point of view, because it is in North America, so it will have to be the same thing. So, if there's a Worldcon in Asia, then you, that Worldcon is the one that's voting where the Asian event is going to happen. If there's no Worldcon in Asia, then the Asian event is voting where the Asian event is happening. Yeah, I believe that's one way to look at it. Yeah, I know this is difficult. It is a little convoluted, but what it's intended to do is give aspects the right to vote on future aspects if they happen to be happening 
at the time the election would go on. Let's have it. Let's try it. I, I, there's more question on this, I believe. 对这位主席您好，呃，感谢您刚才对我问题的答复。对，我现在提出一个，呃，修改四点 X 点一的提议，将大会管理会员，英文的 Members of Administrative 那个字，更改为大会会员，亚洲科幻大会会员，亚洲科幻大会会员，因为管理会员这个词在目前世界科幻大会北美科幻大会。从未出现过，我们不清楚这个管理会员是什么含义。谢谢。Recognizing where the member is trying to go with this, the chair rules the motion out of order, and the reason is because. If so, if if the, if you made this change, you would find points where there was an there was no convention that could legally hold the election. If you specifically named the ASFIC, you would have a plot time where there is nobody qualified to hold the election because ASFIC is not going to happen every year. It can't. Let us say there was an aspect. You know, next, let's give you a specific example. These rules are in effect. Yeah, you, you do it. 啊，这位会员，那不好意思，刚才您的这个提议是不合规的。原因在于，亚洲科幻大会首先就是它并不是每一次、每一年都会举办。那如果说改成呃亚洲科幻大会的会员投票的话，那就不是每年都有办法去投票。你明白这个意思吗？所以说我们会坚持，就是您的这个提议不合规，然后我们会仍然保留之前的 wording。谢谢您的理解。嗯。And the chair observes this indirect language about administering convention, which is exists already for NASFICs, is there precisely because the NASFIC is not held every year. Okay. Are, yeah. I mean, are there any other? Are there any, anyone else that want to propose changes to the wording, which would be anything in the four X through four X four or four X five for the provisions? Mr. McCarty, did you want to debate it or make changes? I want to call the question. Hang on a second. Have we gotten? Have we had at least one speaker in favor and in, and opposed? No. In that case, yeah. I, then I can't. Then I can't call the question. Here. All right. Have this been? Okay. You've spoken in favor of it, I believe. Is there any wish one who wishes to speak against the proposal? Is there any objection to ending the debate and bringing this to a vote? Hearing none. The question is on whether to adopt the revised F.9, which is the sections 4.x through 4.x.4, as originally printed in the agenda, plus 4.x.5 and the provisions in, in the page three discussed earlier. Point of order. Yes. yes. Section 1.2. Oh, and to add section 1.2, yes, thank you very much. I was so focused on that. Yeah, and also to add section the changes to add the words to section 1.2. Before I take a vote, is there anyone who does not know what we are voting on and wants to know? If you don't know, raise your hand. Yes, you do.
我们再跟大家说明一下，就是我们接下来要投票的内容呢，是针对我们原议程、原始议程上面这个 F 九短标题下面的第四点 X 节、四点一、四点二、四点三、四点四，加上我们现在这个补充的啊，这个少数派报告的 F 点九点 B， 这下面有一个呃，有一个一点二和这个四点五，就是所有的这些内容一起进行接下来的表决啊。如果还有不清楚的，请提问。主席先生，请问现在我可以发表一条对这个提案表示反对的辩论意见吗 ？Yes, um, a speech against is an. I'll, I'll go. I'll hand take that because I called for it. You just may have not have realized I was calling for the a, a speech against. Vote, please do. I mean. 好啊，尊敬的主席，还有各位会员，大家好。下面我开始陈述我对新增亚洲科幻大会这一 F 点九整个提案的反对意见。必须强调的是，原提案中强调的亚洲作为一个占世界百分之六十一人口的地区，拥有庞大的科幻迷群体和比较著名的科幻作家，为其举办世界科幻大会的必要性。但是，首先我们仍然需要看到的是，目前在中国、日本等其他国家，已经举办了很多啊规模比较大的科幻活动，包括我刚才所提到的亚太科幻大会或另一颗星球科幻大会，以及其他类型的科幻大会。这些科幻大会运行体系比较成熟，尽管他们可能与现行的世界科幻大会体系存在一些差异。但是这些科幻大会已经足够为亚洲地区的科幻交流，特别是科幻迷的交流提供足够的桥梁。我们认为，如果现在立即举办一个亚洲科幻大会，很有可能会造成这些大会之间的冲突。注意，不是和世界科幻大大会的冲突，而是和在该地区举行的其他类型的科幻活动的冲突。第二。我们注意到该提案的提案人大部分来自本次大会的组委会，但是我们又需要指出的是，本次大会的提案人也好，还有大会的参会者也好，尚不能完全和充分的代表整个亚洲地区的意见。正如我们刚才所说，亚洲是一个占世界人口百分之六十一地的地区，有着数十个国家，以及非常非常庞大的科幻迷群体，要。提出举办亚洲科幻大会，是在某种程度上要代表这些科幻迷，代表这些国家的科幻迷，在世界舞台上发出他们对于科幻文学的见解和看法。而目前，针对亚洲科幻大会的相关讨论尚不十分充分，大量的讨论者基本来自于中国、日本、印度、韩国等少数几个国家。我们还没有充分的听取亚洲其他国家和地区科幻作家、科幻产业工作者以及科幻迷对举办亚洲科幻大会的意见。尽管今天的事务会已经有很多人来到现场，但我认为与亚洲这个这么庞大的一个地区相比，在事务会议上立即做出这样的决议是有不妥当之处的。第三。我们需要注意到，在目前亚洲已经有这么多地区、这么多类型的科幻活动下，工作人员以及承办者、承办城市的压力是非常大的。比如说，我们首先注意到的是，世界科幻大会目前只有两个亚洲国家承办，这并不意自然，这可能是因为以往的世界科幻大会在某些程度上是缺乏一定的足够的包容性的，使得一些亚洲大。国家不能足够承办，但同时这也客观地反映出了亚洲的很多国家和地区尚不具备举办这么大规模的科幻活动的能力。如果我们现在就开始举办亚洲科幻大会，那么大家可以想到的、可以预见到的是，接下来的亚洲科幻大会很有可能会在亚洲的少数几个国家和少数几个城市反复举行，比如成都。我在。本次大会举行期间和举行之前，和参加这次大会的科幻迷以及志愿者以及大会工作人员有过非常多的接触。他们都表示，为了这次世界科幻大会能够办好，他们已经付出了相当大的辛苦、心血和努力
，很多人非常劳累。比如说，在前两天已经有这个我认识的参加科幻大会的人，因为承担了大量的繁重的工作，送到了医院。如果我们要在每年都在这个亚洲地区举办这样的亚洲科幻大会，我认为以目前的亚洲地区的这样的能力。很有可能会给科幻迷和科幻从业者，或者科幻参加科幻大会的工作人员，造成更大的负担。这对于他的时间结束，他的 time for debate in the time for debate against the motion has expired. Thank you. 谢谢。Does any any actually? I believe we've heard all the viewpoints that that this is pretty well covered. I, we're ready to vote. Are we not? No, I guess not. Miss, um, well, no way. Well, both of you have had a chance so once. So wait a minute. Someone who hasn't had a chance to speak in favor. This has to be a speech in favor. How, wait a minute. How much time is left in favor? Minutes and thirty seconds. Four. Four minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just, 发言的那个朋友，他是反对这个亚洲科幻大会，他是站在一个呃从业者的角度，觉得已经有很多这样的科幻大会，然后呃再增加一个是不是会造成混乱，而且给从业者带来很大的压力。那么我站在一个纯科幻迷的角度，而且是老科幻迷的角度来来发表一下我的意见，就是目前在呃在亚洲区域那个是。呃科幻迷的这样的活动确实是很多，但是并不，我认为并不是像刚才那位发言人那样说的，这些活动已经很成熟了。呃，这些活动还都有，从我一个科幻迷的角度来看，这些活动还都有待于提高。而我们这个，呃，世界科幻大会如果在亚洲区举办的话，这是一个非常好的机遇，对于所有的这个其他各类的科幻迷的会议的这个提高，呃，是一个很好的促进。嗯，我是支持这个，我们有这个亚洲区的科幻大会。报上名字，请报上名字。那我叫孙万春，谢谢。Anyone else wishing to speak in favor?、Uh, people who have not spoken in, in, in favor of the well, actually, you've already spoken in favor, have you not? Haven't you? Not at this point. Okay, fine. Mr. Eastlake. Uh, Donald Eastlake, just a couple of quick points. One is that an aspect does not necessarily have to be a giant convention. <laughs> Somebody could run a small aspect if they wanted. And the second point is that uh, there are many conventions in Asia or outside such conventions, but uh, they could be combined with an aspect. Some national convention in some country, any, any country in Asia, could uh, seek to be selected as an aspect and jointly be both an aspect and the whatever national convention that they normally were. So it does not require new conventions or huge conventions. Also, I guess I said two points, but I'll give a third point. Uh, there is a distance limitation. So let's say for whatever reason that, that uh, Cheng, this was already in effect. So uh, Chengdu was choosing an aspect for 2024. It would be restricted to sites that were at least 800 kilometers from Chengdu. So, uh, that less likely that people who are Chengdu staff would work on that convention. And they might, but they, they would, could not, Chengdu could not select itself for the next year. Mr. McCarty, I believe you were trying to get my attention, and would you please stand up? Mr. Chairman, I would like to call the question. Is there a second on the motion to end the debate? Second. I, this is not debate, but I'd like to see a show of hands of, any, uh, of anybody who still wishes to debate this question. Just raise your hand. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not asking you to debate it. I just want to know if you wanted to debate it. Just raise your hand. I'm trying to find out. Okay. It, no, no, it's not that. There's a, I'm following, I'm following yeah. the standing rules. Thank you. This is a motion. To this, this is a uh, yes. I, the, I, I know. I'm just counting to see if you had. Okay, you don't. You can put your hand down now. So I, this is not a vote. I just a show of who wanted to debate. This, there's a rule, and we have a rule that says when the motion to close debate comes up, I have to ask who might still want to speak. It takes a two-thirds vote to shut off debate. 
I will first take a show of hands without counting it to find out if, that, if people are tired of talking and want to vote. All those who are in favor of ending the debate now, raise your hands. Hands down. Those of you who wish to continue the debate, raise your hands. Hands down. In the opinion of the chair, there being there is more than two-thirds in the affirmative. The debate is closed. The question before us is to adopt the combined all of the 4.x through 4.x.5 material and the change to section 1.2 and the provisions associated to it. This is the vote on whether to establish an ASFIC or not, provided that it gets ratified next year, if it passes. Are there any questions about what we are voting on? Yes. 好，那么接下来就到了我们现在的最终的表决，就是我们到底是不是要赞成通过我们原议程的 F 九的从四点一到四点四这些所有的内容，包括我们刚才提交的这个少数派报告第三页的 F 点九点 B 合在一起的内容，也就是我们后续是否会有亚洲科幻大会的一个设立。我们现在表决的内容是这个，好，请大家理解。I will first take a sh uh, show of hands, uncounted, and if it is unclear, I will do ask for I will do a serpentine vote. All those in favor of adopting the ASFIC proposal, raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed. Hands down. In the opinion of the chair, the affirmative has it. This motion is adopted. It is not. The nat an ASFIC is not established at this point. This motion has given the first passage. It will be sent to next year's World Con for ratification. Should it be ratified, it will first take effect in the following year. That brings this, hang on, let me make a note on my own notes what just happened here. Um, that brings an end to the, the consideration of item F.9. And um, somewhat to my relief, I relinquished the chair. <laughs> my thanks to the deputy <laughs> presiding officer for <laughs> taking care of that. Uh, the only announcement that I'm aware of and do is the Mark Protection Committee. Uh, Mark Protection Committee will meet at 10 a.m. tomorrow in this room, assuming it's available. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is available. Yeah, okay. So uh, I will be sending out a notice to the members of the Mark Protection Committee, and uh, I think we will probably have a forum for the Mark Protection Committee here, but I will be attempting to set up a Zoom for remote people. Uh, the Mark Protection Committee is the continuing body that protects the trademarks for the World Science Fiction Society, like the name Hugo Award. Uh, and that this meeting is open. Anybody else who wants to can come and, and listen. Uh, you know, only the members of the Mark Protection Committee can vote, but uh, it's, okay, it's an open meeting. And uh, it probably won't run too long uh, tomorrow, maybe half an hour or 40 minutes, something like that. So, uh, thanks to everybody for attending the business meeting, and thanks to all the head table staff for their support. And uh, does, any, does anybody else have any announcements? Hearing none, the, uh, I'd like to thank all the support staff as well. Uh, and we'll uh, uh, declare the World Science Fiction Society business meeting at the 81st World Con uh, during the Sydney VA. Thank you. <laughs>